Walter. Now on Rockin' Manooch with Jimmy B on Fox Sports 910. And we're live. All right, Howard Balls are joining us now. H Baller 721, as he put on Twitter a couple hours ago about the Buda Baker, the Specs, the Specs. Uh, thirteen point one million base now. Uh, three hundred thousand dollars signing bonus, up to two hundred thousand per game active bonus, which is just close to twelve thousand per game. Uh, salary fourteen point two is the same. Additional four hundred. I don't understand this. Four hundred grand off season workout bonus. That's <laughs> such a joke. And then one point four million each year play time. Five hundred year Pro Bowl and, or first team All Pro. Are we missing anything else, Howard? You get like a you know. He gets a, a gift card at Twin Peaks or something. <laughs> Did they scratch that itch for him? You think they're Howard? Yeah, I guess it was, you know, what was going to happen to make this all come together. And it, it was interesting to see, uh, obviously, the, the initial tweet by uh, Ian Rappaport didn't go into any detail, which is usual. I think I always caution people when they read the tweets from him or Adam Schefter, they're all in deference to the agent because those are the numbers that the agent wants to put out there. And they get that number. They don't ask any questions. They just race to put it on Twitter as fast as they can. And I thought it was interesting, the one part, like you said, where it was characterized as you got a raise in 2024. Well, he, he, the only thing added in next year is a 400, that $400,000 right. workout bonus. They didn't guarantee any of his base salary next year. And even though... The base salary is guaranteed now for this year. The bottom line is it becomes guaranteed when you're on the opening day roster anyway. And so it was really just, you know, throwing a little, a little extra money to him. You know, a lot of it has to be earned with the per game roster bonuses and the incentives and all that. I think what it does though is, you know, the team wanted to get it done. Buda wanted somewhat more. I think he wanted a, you know, a gesture by the organization that at least he should have the opportunity to make some more money in this deal. But what I, I, I believe that it sets up for, depending on what happens this season, obviously, is it sets it up for a, a true extension right. and renegotiation next year when, uh, you know, when he'll have just the one year remaining on the contract. I mean, you know, the one thing when you look at this roster now, guys, I don't know if I've mentioned this on the show and on my Thursday visits, but you look at 2025 and except for the draft choices that were taken in 2022 or this year and the undrafted free agents this year who all signed three year contracts, but most of them aren't going to make the team except for all those young guys. The, the Cardinals only have three players mm. under contract in 2025. Wow. Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray, DJ Humphreys and Jalen Thompson. That wow. is it. So that's an example of the sea change in the roster that we have seen this offseason. You know, we talked about this yesterday, Howard, is that if, if Buda Baker was reported by a lot of you guys, he was out there doing all his stuff on the field, I told Jimmy, I said, you know what, it sounds like to me that there's a good faith negotiation offers being made, or maybe this deal was done, and that was in a hold-in, him reporting and being out there on the field. I just kind of felt like at that point, something's been done here, and then it was reported tonight or this morning, so I just kind of felt him on the field. Something had to have been done yesterday. Yeah, no, no doubt. I, you know, I think it, it probably, I don't know how, when it happened. It, it might have been at the end of last week because the sure. contract, you know, by this morning was already, you know, submitted, you know, to the league. And, and that's how I was able to reach out to some sources and got those specific numbers. So it, it was done, uh, I'm sure, you know, prior uh, to yesterday, uh, certainly. And yeah, I, I felt the same thing when uh, when he when he was out there practicing that either something had been done quietly mm -hmm. and we didn't know about it yet, or that he was confident that something would be done uh, relatively quickly because I mean he want yeah you know, he, he's a warrior obviously he wants yeah. to be here I think he, he he wants to be a leader in this change in the organization I think that he, he kind of likes what he's seen yeah. from the from the staff and and the change you know DJ Humphreys talked to the media today after practice just about just about an hour ago and someone asked him about the culture shift in the organization and dj's answer was it's been a culture shock mm -hmm. and then when when someone asked him and said well what does that trace to and he said jg he said you either do it the way he wants it or you go home wow. and but i you know i, I think i think buddha want, obviously wants to be the leader he wants to be around i'm fairly certain his daughter's going to Arizona, i mean i'm sorry his sister, sister. was going to arizona state and so I think that, you know, it was, you know, 
you know, it was a good, you know, somewhat good faith. They didn't throw that much more money at him, didn't extend the contract. But I think it's fair to say that uh, assuming everything progresses this year, that uh, something probably will get done uh, going into the 2024 season. All right, Howard is our guest right now, Howard Balzer, and you're uh, on the right to Three minutes. guest line. All right, let's get to this real fast then. With everything that has taken place and the guys that are on the PUP list, the PUP, Murray, Ernst, Old Jolari, when do you think you might start to see? We know Murray's situation, but Ertz or Ojolari, when do you think they might be on the practice yeah. field? What's with Ojolari? I yeah. mean, he just signed late. Is this kid uh, coming in to, as a rookie injured already? Well, you know, apparently, now he, he did have, it was reported early in the draft process that he was dealing with a hamstring issue. And then apparently at some point, which we haven't gotten information on, between the combine and the draft, and it might have been when, I don't know if it was, it, 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 you know, it, between then or after the draft, if it was some, if it was sometime when he was here, you know, rookie camp or whatever, that he tweaked his knee. And so they felt Ooh. that uh, they wanted, and, and it wasn't major. It was, that this is what we're told. It was minor, that he had a minor procedure done. And I don't think that will keep him out very long. Certainly that's what everybody hopes. And that's the case. But, you know, these guys on the pup list, they can come off at any time uh, during training camp. Okay. You know, Earth obviously had the ACL for two was minutes four weeks, uh, before Kyler Murray did, so he might be on a little bit. You know, uh, prior to, to Kyler, he's been. You know, he, he talked in April about you know trying to get back by week one, but he also said, "But you got to practice some. You know, before that, you can't just go out there and play uh, without practicing." So certainly, it's hoped that it will be in the next you know couple of weeks, and then and then you throw um, Garrett Wilson in there, the rookie third-round corner who tore his ACL at Syracuse yeah. uh, last year. He's not on PUP because he was in college when it happened, so that's considered a non-football injury because it didn't happen while with an NFL team, and who knows when he'll be ready and, and how much he'll be able to contribute you know, this year. So we'll be watching closely and see when it is, and you know, the thing is, if they don't come off during, during the summer, during training camp, and they go on reserve, on August 29th, which is the cut to 53 players, if they're on that reserve list, then they have to miss and not practice for at least the first four games of the season. Uh, Howard, what, what kind of a, a practice schedule, pads, or, and or, God forbid, scrimmaging uh, has been outlined <laughs> as far as this team is concerned? Well, the first, the, the first four or five days of training camp are considered an acclimation period. And so you can't, you, you can't be in pads or any of that. And today, I mean, I wasn't out there yesterday, uh, but I was out, out there today, of course, and, and the players are in helmets. But I'll tell you, they were getting after it uh, pretty good. And so there'll be that for several days, then they'll start getting in pads, but there's a limit to how many, pa how many padded practices sure. you can have uh, in training camp. So, you know, he, you know, Gannon wants us to be as physical a camp as possible, and, you know, we'll see how that uh, plays out. And, of course, there's a, you know, let's remember, there's a game in two weeks. Yes. You know, there's a game two weeks from tomorrow, uh, the first preseason game. And so, you know, once you start getting into games, your practice time is one minute bit because you don't practice the day before the game. You don't practice the day after a game. And then, you know, of course, it gets back to, to business as usual. So, you know, that's pretty wet, pretty much the way it's spelled out. The fan, fans were out there today. I think Saturday, it'll, it'll probably be some real energy. And there, like I said, there was some pretty good energy today. Uh, but Saturday... There'll probably be more fans than there were because it is a weekend and it's the whole NFL, you know, um, you know, whatever they're calling it, you know, back to football and, you know, all that stuff. And so, and it'll, you know, and, and the, you know, the, the players like it, you know, with the fans out there and cheering, it gets, it gets them going. And like I said, they were, you know, they, they, they had a lot of energy in that practice today, which was certainly good to see. Who got the reps of quarterback? Hmm. Well, you know, Col Colt McCoy was with the first unit. Okay. Uh, Clayton Toon. Uh, Clayton Toon with the second, really? and yeah. there were there weren't that there weren't that many snaps. You know, the practice was only about an hour and a half, a little bit longer than that, and there weren't that many snaps uh, that I saw with uh, you know David Blau or uh, Jeff Driscoll. So I, I think they're giving uh, Clayton Toon every opportunity. He looked pretty good. Now, again, it's not it's not football, it's not tackle, it's not contact or any of that stuff, but he seemed to have some poise and know what he was doing out there. And I think this team has given him every opportunity to be Colt McCoy's backup uh, when, at, at worst, when the season, 
season open. So he got most of them. Uh, Paris Johnson uh, was out there again, like he was in OTA and uh, and minicamp at right tackle. And and the, and the offensive line had on that first unit had um, uh, Elijah Wilkinson at left guard and the Elder Froholt at center. And so it was interesting because Kelvin Beecham was at right tackle with the second unit. So, you know, seeing how that plays out on that offensive line for the rest of the summer is going to be intriguing to watch. Intriguing to watch. We can break. Howard, as always, buddy, thanks for the time. I, uh, I know you, you're, you're getting that itch, huh? We got, we got some football to finally talk about. You get to watch some football. Real football. Yeah. Hey, well, you know, real, fo- real, real football is not until September 10th. Right, true. But, exactly. You know, you know, every, yeah, I, I know, you know, every year I say, you know, the first thing is you say you can't wait for uh, the first preseason game. And as soon as you see about a quarter of it, you're going, okay, let's get to the regular season. <laughs> <laughs> These hour balls are always nice to join us on Thursdays uh, in the 3 o'clock hour. We appreciate you, Howard. Thank you. All right, guys. Take care. Hey, you follow him. He's got a bunch of stories up at gophxpnx.com. And you can follow him on Twitter at hbalzer721. So check him out there. More Rock Minuch with Jimmy B continues from Twitter.